So today I'm going to be giving you guys a demonstration on how to create the French seam. Rather unusual looking technique, usually involving one to two seams, but there's always one hidden seam on the inside. No burnishing, no edge paint, the leather is the finish of the edge in itself. Interested to know what I mean? Well, let's take you through a step-by-step -step process on how it's done. To see what it looks like, this is a product with a French seam along the top. As you can see, the edge is just pure leather. There's no stitch along the top. Well, there is, you just can't see it. So let's show you the mystery stitch, the hidden stitch on the inside. Now I'm gonna go live on Instagram to take some questions from people over there. If you're not on Instagram, at Leathercraft Masterclass, link in the description below if you wanna follow me there because you're missing out on a ton of free content also available over there. So don't forget to go over and give me a follow. In the meantime, let's go live and say hi to a few folks. Okay, so whenever you create a French seam, you're gonna need an exterior leather and you're also gonna need a lining leather because this edge actually originates on the outside of the leather and goes over in and out, almost like a snail around itself and over the top down onto the inside. So for example, on this little uh, card holder here, you can see the leather on the outside, which is a dark navy blue goat skin, actually ends up going all the way down the inside to make up the lining. So it's the lining and the edge all at the same time. So you're gonna need your main leather. And I've just got a, a piece of uh, vegetable tan leather here, it's about three millimeters thick piece of leather. Hello on Instagram, all you guys. And I've also got a lining piece. Now this is about 0.8 millimeter uh, soft lamb skin. Might be a little bit thick for this purpose. 0.6 to 0.8 is uh, what I would use. The first thing we're gonna do is actually stitch it on the flesh side to the front of your leather project, okay? So the grain side of your leather project, be it a wallet, uh, even a watch strap uh, or a bag, something like that. We're going to glue and stitch that lining leather onto the grain side, okay? Flesh side, I'm gonna trim it. So, this is an important step if you wanna reduce the bulk on the outside because uh, if you don't skive it, you're still gonna get full thickness. And 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 is 1.6, so you're gonna have a protrusion of 1.6. If we can skive it down a little bit, um, then it's gonna make life a lot easier. Hey guys, a few people joined in. Uh, normally I scarf on the pairing stand, but you guys uh, will be able to see that over there. So let's see, which side am I gonna go for? This side. So I'm just doing a little pull scarf, just thinning down that leather, starting at one end. Now this will stretch the leather somewhat if you're using a, a thin, soft skin like I've got here, which is lamb skin. You'll see it actually uh, getting longer. But I'm starting with a, a small shallow sky and just gradually working it back. Just preparing it, getting it nice and thin. We don't wanna make it paper thin because we still want to have some durability in there. So at least taking down, you know, two thirds of its thickness. Push sky for this first part. For a little tiny scar like this, I sometimes don't mind using just my regular craft knife, as long as it's nice and sharp. Okay, so, as you can see there, you might be able to see a lighter area where I've actually just thinned it down a little bit. And you've got some fluff on the end, so an easy way to get rid of that is just to go right on the edge with a ruler. Just bring it up just till it's kissing that edge and then guillotine all those little bits and you'll have a nice, neat edge, there you go. Okay, now normally I'd actually roughen the grain side of the lining leather because that's what I'm gonna glue. I'm gonna glue grain side of the lining leather onto grain side of the exterior leather, in this case, a simple piece of veg tan. I'm gonna come down about two to three millimeters, just using a little bit of contact adhesive here. This happens to be uh, Yuhu or Uhu. Clear contact adhesive. Just 
good because you can put it in these little bottles. It's thin enough, it actually comes out quite easily. And I'm also going to put about two to three millimeters onto the veg tan piece that I'm actually doing the project on. Okay, just going to let that dry. Now, you don't necessarily need a pricking iron with really wide prongs on this one. And I'll tell you why is, is when you, after you've stitched this down and you've marked it through with your pricking iron, you're going to be pulling the leather tight against your stitches or reasonably tight against your stitches. And if there are big slits in the lining leather at the same time, you're going to see that on the outside. So in fact, what you really want is one of those really kind of cheap eBay uh, stitching prongs or stitching chisels, as should I say. So like these things, okay? Remember these? <laughs> All over eBay. Yeah, they're really cheap. They're absolutely ideal for this. So I'm just gonna grab a pricking iron and a hammer, and you know what? So I can go all the way through, because this work surface is a bit too hard. Just use a little bit of MDF, simple solutions. Okay, so now that's dried, these two parts are dry. I'm gonna take the edge on the piece of lambskin, I'm gonna match it up to the edge on the piece of veg tan as well, so it's gonna be edge to edge, okay? So placing it down, bringing it along, and then squeezing it in. Just a quick tap down, like so. All right, so we have our veg tan. So you can see there now, it's glued edge to edge, like so. And it was grain side to grain side on both pieces. So now I'm gonna take a ruler, place it down, and I'm gonna come down about five millimeters. Okay, similar to our glue line. So I'm measuring down from the edge. And I'm gonna take a pen, in this case, because the leather is dark, I'm using a light pen. If it was a uh, light leather, I'd use a dark pen. And I'm marking on the flesh side a little piece of lambskin here, all right? Now, taking our stitching chisel, just a cheap stitching chisel, really, really tiny prongs. Hello from Turkey. Hello from the United Kingdom. So a really small pricking iron. This one happens to be three millimeters. And I'm following that line and I'm gonna mark all the way through, okay? So I'm gonna penetrate all the way through. Okay, stitching chisels that are inexpensive, aren't the easiest to pull out. <laughs> and in fact, I'm gonna use a ruler and pull that out. They're very thin prongs. Ideally, you don't want to stitch through three millimeters of leather, but I have it around. <laughs> it's available. So just gently wobbling back and forth, not too much, and then lifting. Okay, now I'm going to do one more in the end there. So right now, you might be able to see that little white line across there. I've put holes through all the way and you might be able to see all the holes on the rear side, these little three millimeter holes. Let's move this forwards. There you guys, thank you for joining. And I'm placing it now in the stitching clamps and I'm gonna tighten that up. And the thread that I'm using, this is actually just some Gutterman uh, extra strong thread, Gutterman M782. It's for hand stitching or machine stitching, but it's very thin, yet very strong polyester thread. And I'm simply gonna stitch this from one end to the other. 
The reason you want thin thread is normally the lining uh, and the binding leather for French binding is reasonably thin so if you're using thread that's too thick what can tend to happen is uh, you'll see these ripples on the other side when you've actually completed your project which is not really ideal you want to make sure that you can uh, well you can see nothing it's just nice and smooth that's the whole point is a bit of a, like a mystery a mystery thread a mystery seam but at the same point for the same thing you don't really want to go too thin if you are using this as a lining on the inside of a project you don't want it to be too delicate if it's a glue in lining as in you're gluing going over the edge and gluing the lining on the inside of the project fully then you can go a little bit thinner but if it's loose for example a small bag something like that then uh, you always want to make sure you have enough thickness so just over halfway here now coming towards the end reasonably tight I'm not over tightening it but I'm allowing those stitches to sink in and one little top tip I'll give you is that you can see I'm using a three millimeter pricking iron here you don't really want to go larger than that because when you lift the leather up against the stitches if there's too much of a space between each stitch uh, you will again see ripples along the bottom so that's something else to watch out for it's going to move this along my little clamp there coming up to the last quarter here almost done and then I'll show you what to do next involve a little bit of gluing almost at the end a few more stitches to go I'm using a light thread here uh, normally I'd use it you know if I'm using a black lambskin like this I'll be using black thread to match it um, but I'm using white so that it will actually show up on camera and you guys can see it otherwise it wouldn't be much of a demonstration if you can't see what's going along at the very least now if, uh, if you really want to do this and you're finding it's uh, I'm going a little bit too fast here I do have a course on the Leathercraft Masterclass the techniques of hand stitching it was in fact the first course I ever produced and uh, I do this in depth on there a little bit slower push for time on this live so <laughs> okay a couple of back stitches there you don't have to do anything with them afterwards because it's all going to get glued in so let's have a little look and see where we are at the moment so there we are so you might be able to see those little stitches there and on the rear side just about I'm still going to tap those down however I don't want to leave them proud And we're not looking for angles at all, we're looking for uh, straight stitches, okay, reasonably straight. Now for all those of you who uh, saw my recent post that I did, I'll show you some other types of stitching. I recently created a course, which is kind of like part two of the techniques of hand stitching with some more advanced work in there. And you'll see here, this is a regular, looks like a regular seam, nice high angles on there, but on the rear side, you'll notice it looks very different. Okay, the stitches look much longer. This is actually a really good one to use with thin skins because these stitches are twice as long as normal, yet these are regular stitches, okay? And because these stitches on the back are twice as long, it puts half the stress on thin, delicate skins, allowing you to get much more durability just from this different stitch rather than a regular saddle stitch with the right tension can actually begin to cut through okay or wear it out this is a, a strange one if you can see that on camera there this is actually an alternating color stitch so you've got red green red green red green red green all the way along it's a really cool one because you can play around with uh, different colors to match different colors on your project you might have two colors on a bag for example or a wallet 
the inside and the outside and it's sometimes nice to add a little detail of adding a little pop of color there to match those. But the great thing about this is it proves that it's done by hand rather than a machine because a machine can't go in and out like a weave, uh, whereas we can doing hand stitching. So something to tell your customers, it's a, a sign that you're actually hand stitching. This specific, specific type of stitch is still considered a saddle stitch. It's just modified for two colors. Uh, this one, probably my favorite one, if you can see that seam there, or on that side, no? Okay, where well, it's actually invisible, okay? It's the blind center stitch. The stitch is actually on the inside. Very strong, very sturdy, and you can't wear the thread out because it's not exposed to the outside. Uh, the great thing about this is not only is it blind, it allows you to have more of a minimalist look on your projects, but uh, it allows, especially if you've got some really grained leather, highly detailed, some really nice part that you want to showcase, maybe it's uh, exotic skins, for example, as well, could use that. Um, it really allows the leather to take center stage rather than the stitching technique. So you can do a project that's fully blind stitched like this, or you can do a project that's part blind stitched. So it's a really cool one. I've just gone ahead and burnished the edge on this one a little bit just to, uh, to finish the edge. And the last one I show you is the wrapped stitch. This actually has roots in embroidery. Difficult to see there, but there's actually a brown piece of thread underneath all those stitches running along. And it gives almost a ca like a candy cane look to it. It's really, really interesting. But it also allows the leather to last a little bit longer or that prevents the stitches from cutting into the leather because you're reinforcing underneath each individual stitch. So that is coming out tomorrow tomorrow okay that course will be landing so don't forget to check that out so let's carry on with our main project which is french binding first thing i'm going to do is grab a number three it's kind of a medium uh, edge beveler and i'm just going to nip the edges off on each side that gives them more of a, a rounded smoother transition as it flips over And what I'm actually going to do is uh, use a little bit of PVA, a little bit of PVA glue. Grab a brush. And I'm going to apply glue to this side, so the, great, the uh, flesh side of the lining, the top, and the rear at the same time, okay? If you're doing a glue-in, that's what you want to do. If you're not doing a glue-in, as in you're only gluing up to the stitches and then you're going to let it loose after that, perhaps you're doing the inside of a bag for a pocket, um, just glue up to the rear side of the stitches and that's it. So I'm going to use the big brush here. It's a nice warm day. It's currently 31 degrees Celsius in the workshop. Way too hot. I have a fan going. Hopefully that's not uh, being picked up on the microphone. And I'm going all the way along the rear side as well. Put that to one side. That's the lid. Okay, and here's a project that I've already done this on, as you can see at the top there. So there is no visible stitching on this one. So this is uh, <laughs> no boxes, says Stephen K. Gavin. Uh, I'm fully clothed today in the workshop. <laughs> you don't pay me enough for that, that's extra. <laughs> so that's what it should look like. So what we're gonna do now is grab us as a bone folder. We're going to lift the leather up so you can see the stitches here. Lift it up, okay, like so. I'm going to face it down even though I've put some glue on that side. And I'm just going to rub back and forth, turn it so I can see it. Rub it back and forth up against the stitches. I can feel the stitches are stopping the bone folder going any further. Add a little bit of tension and then begin to press down. Okay, 
I'm happy with that and how it looks because I can undo it because it's PVA. So I'll mention, uh, do I have air conditioning in the workshop? The thing is, the UK is weird. Uh, last summer, there were maybe one, two or three days where it got really hot in the workshop during the day, like peak times. It's not really worth getting a unit in here. But this summer has just been absolutely non-stop. So the UK normally doesn't really justify air conditioning. Okay, so that is the front. Now what I'm gonna do is pull that over the top. Okay, so we're now bringing it over the edge. Again, tension, lifting up, bone folder to the rescue, turn in that bone folder, and then bringing it down. Okay, using your fingers, feeling your way through. And I've transitioned that over to the other side now. Happy with how everything looks, that's good. A little stray glue, just gonna rub that off there. Uh, for this, I'm gonna use a roller. Make sure everything goes down. And just gonna trim off the excess here. So we can now get rid of that. Okay, so we have, sign of the times, yeah. So we have our stage one French binding, okay? So we stitched it grain side onto grain side, and then we wrapped it around the stitches over the edge and down onto the rear side. So that's a stage one. What's stage two? It's a good question. Let's nip that in a little bit more. Compress it down. In fact, I'm gonna roll that fire edge. Get it nice and neat. Okay, stage two is, is an optional stage. This is where you actually finish a stitch underneath that goes through to this side. So if you were gonna leave this lining loose as in you were gonna add a pocket or something on the inside of the bag, you probably wouldn't wanna leave it like this because eventually the glue can actually peel off and that's something you want to avoid. So this is like a reinforcement for that. So it does mean that you're double stitching, but it can actually look really effective. So let's grab ourselves a pricking iron. And just for speed, I am gonna go all the way through. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the pricking iron and I'm placing it just off about a millimeter off. Right where that binding starts, okay? Just go all the way through. One more in there, yeah. We can get one more. So here we are. So we have now some holes, if you can see that, underneath where that binding is. Move some of these tools out of the way. Close off our blades. And this is our, our reinforcement stitch. So I'm gonna take my clams. I'm gonna place this piece in the clams now. Uh, I've pre-prepared some thread. Uh, I've gone for black as well. Normally I don't actually like going uh, dark thread on light leather as a rule. I don't know why. It's just not my thing, man. But it will highlight for you uh, the stitch so you can actually see it in all its glory. Now I'm not going to do a cast on here. It would be a little bit pointless because you won't be able to see the stitch on the rear side. It's black thread on black leather, so no need. And now I'm gonna stitch all the way along. A little bit difficult to see the uh, black thread on the slits on the rear side. 
that we will get there. So already it's looking pretty nice. I do like uh, black and tan. This will look nice. I mean, if it was a product, that is, it would look nice as it ages and that, that light tan uh, turns into a darker tan with, uh, with the black lambskin. You know, pretty much like this. I mean, this is pre-dyed leather, but it's cognac. It's got that black and tan going on, which I really like. Um, although <laughs> that's actually dark, uh, dark navy. Some of you may know my favorite color combination in the world is navy and tan. So one day when I get my Aston Martin, it will be navy blue on the outside and uh, <laughs> tan on the inside. One can dream. One can dream. That would be my ultimate. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get... Yeah, going on through some thick veg tan, it's easier just to uh, open up that hole a little bit with a round hole sometimes. If you're fumbling, it doesn't really slow you down anyway, so it just makes life a little bit easier. So I'm not using a blade at all, it's just a round hole. Moving this up a little bit. almost done and then I'll show you exactly what this looks like. This is really effective on wallets. I haven't seen, I haven't actually done it myself on a watch strap and I haven't seen it on a watch strap. I've done by edge binding and seen edge binding, but it would be really interesting to try French binding on a watch strap. With a raised center, I can imagine that would look very interesting. Easy on card holders, great on tote bags as well. Fantastic technique. And you know what, you can get it done so quickly when you get used to it that, you know, by the time you're done, you would have got your first layer of edge paint on. And you've got something that, in my opinion, looks really classy. And it's natural as well. You're finishing the leather with leather. And if you're using something that's very durable, goat skin or even kangaroo perhaps, then uh, you know, you're creating something that's actually very durable and it will do well. This is definitely where you'd want to use a, a, a dyed through leather. So that's leather that's been not just surface dyed and it's a different color underneath, but it's the same color all the way through. If you cut a cross section of it, you'll get the same, the same color. Okay, so let's give you a quick demonstration. or well, not demonstration, let's show you what I've just done. How about that? Use the good English. Quick tappy tap using the back of the hammer, okay, so the, the shaft end. If you're not sure, uh, another way of doing it is simply using a bone folder, decent amount of pressure, and push it all along. So, guys, there we go. This is French binding. So there's a seam underneath, which we can't see, and there's a reinforcing seam on the outside, which we can see. But this lip here, it looks like it could peel off because it, you know, it's just glued, but it's not just glued. Immediately under that end is a strong, tight stitch keeping everything in place. We didn't have to do any edge finishing. I mean, look at that edge. Okay, if that was edge paint, you'd be impressed, right? <laughs> but it's not synthetic material, it's a natural material, it's a grain. Although lambskin, which is what this is, albeit very, very soft, uh, not the most durable overall, goatskin definitely, which is what I've used on this project. For those of you who are interested, this is actually a pattern project. It's not a video I created. They're on the website. It's a tutorial, which is pictures, over 100 pictures, uh, with descriptions on exactly how to make it. This is the impossible card slip, because it starts on one side and finishes on the other side. And if you look all the way down on the inside, Okay, not the hole, but the sides. You can't actually see where it ends at any point. So hence the name, the impossible card slip. So that's a pra practical way. This is fully glued in on the lining. Okay, so I haven't done the stitch on the outside like I have here. All right, that's why I've, I've left this uh, to look a little bit more mysterious. But that is French binding. Incidentally enough, in France, they call it English binding. <laughs> 
And uh, one of the techniques that I teach in the course, uh, this one here, it's called le, it's just one needle and thread, le point anglais, which means uh, the English stitch. <laughs> so the French like to, uh, like to give us credit for everything. Even though we call this the French seam, they call it the English seam. <laughs> I don't know why. But guys, there you go. That's the uh, French binding. There, obviously, uh, as I said before, there's more information on leathercraftmastercast.com. The course to watch is the techniques of hand stitching part one. The first one I ever made, I go through this again, but in a little bit more detail with a better camera, a little bit closer. Um, if you want to learn some more advanced techniques, thinking outside the saddle stitch, we have the back stitch or le point anglais. We have the wrapped stitch. We have the blind stitch, which is a stitch that you cannot see. And also the alternating color stitch, which is a course that will be released tomorrow. Okay. Now, don't forget to check out leathercraftmasterclass.com where you'll get your free tool guides and free leather selection video, which is still available, which will be changing soon, by the way. Uh, we have something else in order. Nice one, Philip. Many thanks to Stephen. Thank you very much. And I will see you all in the next time I go live, hopefully soon. Take it easy, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.